Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and we're going to talk about tabletop gaming or rather the uh, celebrities around the tabletop gaming scene right now. We're going to talk about Critical Role and uh, it turns out that they are Twitch's highest paid streamers. Remember that Twitch hack? Yeah, Twitch was hacked and the uh, revenue of all of their streamers was leaked in. I was very surprised. I'm going to be honest. I was very surprised that Critical Role was by far the highest paid streamer. Now, I know they moved to Twitch. Uh, I know that on YouTube, they're popular, but they're not like doing gangbusters. So I was kind of like, well, you know, um, I'm not sure how they're doing on Twitch. But yeah, uh, over $9 million over the course of a couple of years for Critical Role just on Twitch. That's not including any merchandise. That's not including their Kickstarter. Uh, they did like 11 or $12 million there. That's not including uh, any merchandise sales or any uh, uh, you know money for appearances or endorsements or anything like that. I mean, Hasbro could be kicking money over to them. I have no idea. Um, so it's interesting to see the reactions to this because a lot of people were, were uh, under the impression that Critical Role is just a bunch of friends hanging out, uh, playing tabletop games. And no, it's actually big, big business. Uh, for sure. And this probably explains a lot in the shift in attitude in tabletop gaming as, as for a lot of people, Critical Role has become Dungeons and Dragons for them. You know, in my case, I, I, I learned D&D at the lunch table uh, after school waiting for the bus with some friends of mine. But uh, for the current crop of uh, tabletop gamers, Critical Role is D&D. Now, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see if this is sustainable long term um, or if people are going to get burnt out on it or if there's going to be backlash. There is a little bit of backlash uh, from Twitter. I'm, I'm not going to lie. There is. People are like, what? They get paid? Yeah, they get paid. They get paid lots. So <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 236,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah, so let's let's talk about this because there was this hack. Um, Twitch, uh, you know, all of their top earners' revenue was leaked as part of a part of this, and it turns out that Critical Role is the top earner. Um, you know, and actually, I'm looking at the numbers, and I'm going to be completely honest. I'm looking at the numbers, and compared to YouTube, they're low. <laughs> you know, compared to YouTube, Twitch streamers don't make as much money, nearly as much money as, as YouTubers on average. Again, that's, that's on average, but yeah, it's, it's definitely become a business. Critical Role has become a brand and, uh, it almost feels like Dungeons and Dragons, to be honest, is, is secondary. It's almost like Dungeons and Dragons is just sort of the, uh, the vehicle for their brand, which is a bunch of Hollywood nerds hanging out playing tabletop games, acting and all of that. And I'm not going to dunk on them for that. I want to be really clear. Uh, I actually had the chance to meet Matt Mercer, I think before Critical Role really blew up. I, I want to say it was, we did a panel with him like 2012 and he was a real nice guy. You know, I, so I'm not, I'm not dunking on him and I'm not belittling their success. The only thing that has changed, um, you know, from my perspective as someone who used to game back in the day is the audience that has uh, sort of gathered around Critical Role. It's sort of attracted a lot of the Tumblr crowd. And now we're starting to get into, you know, safe spaces in gaming and monsters are racist and all of this other stuff that I'm kind of like, eh, do we really need rule books to, you know, to cover this stuff. Can't you just make your own rules, house rules? Uh, we've been doing that since forever. So it definitely has changed the game, but it's also very, very big business. And, and remember guys, uh, Twitch is owned by Amazon and uh, Amazon is releasing their animated series. Yeah. You know, so I, you know, I, the cynic in me, and again, I'm not going to fall. I am a dyed the wool capitalist. I'm not going to fault anybody for making money, especially doing something you love doing. I'm not going to fault anybody for that. But part of me cynically wonders if Critical Role even needed the Kickstarter money because they already had an Amazon deal, you know, locked in. 
because I'm like, well, this is going to cost more than 11 or $12 million to produce this series, probably. And they already had contacts at Amazon being their top streamers. Again, very surprised. Uh, I am. Maybe maybe I just did not realize how big Critical Role had actually become. Uh, because, again, I remember doing the panel with Matt Mercer. Uh, to me, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. I mean, it's probably been seven or eight years. But uh, it was just kind of starting out. And now it's this huge, huge uh, thing. But let's talk about this and talk about some of the reactions. Um, so this is coming from Video Games Chronicle. Twitch leak reveals the site's highest paid streamers. More than 80 streamers have earned over a million dollars in the past two years. Um, so this is authentic. This is authentic. Uh, so as Twitch user knows something points out, these figures only relate to money paid directly from Twitch to users and likely includes money earned from subscriptions and ad revenue. What it does include is money that streamers have earned outside of Twitch, including merchandise, YouTube revenue, sponsorships, and external donations. This is um, true, because actually, in, in some cases, your merchandise sales can be more lucrative than your YouTube ad revenue. I mean, look at the Comicsgate guys. You know, they're making most of their money selling comic books not necessarily on YouTube. I mean, I think some of them do well on YouTube, but if I had to guess, you know, armchair observation, I would say they're making significantly more money selling comic books than they are, you know, getting super chats or ad revenue or whatever, just based on the the views I can see in the CPM and all of that. Um, despite this, the list shows that 81 Twitch streamers have been paid more than a million by Twitch since August of 2019. So this is actually three years and somebody breaks it down. It sounds like a lot of money. And for an individual, it would be a, a shit ton of money. Um, but Critical Role has become this like big production company. Uh, so this is kind of like rooster teeth, I think, at this point, where they're taking this revenue and they're splitting it, you know, 20, 30 different ways. Uh, top of the list is Critical Role, a team of voice actors who stream Dungeons & Dragons sessions. They've made more than $9.6 million from Twitch payouts in the past two years, according to the leak. Also earning more than $5 million since August. Uh, we've got some Overwatch guys, some Counter-Strike guys, Fortnite guys, uh, FaZe Clan. FaZe Clan? FaZe Clan's in here? Anyway, yeah, here we go. Critical Role, $9.6 million. $9.6 million. Um, and so people are kind of concerned. They're like, well, here's the thing. Um, and don't contact, I want to be very clear, do not contact anybody. I'm going to show you tweets or public tweets. Don't contact anybody. I feel like I have to say that because people are like, oh, you're putting a target. And it's like, no, 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 this is public having a conversation. Um, but uh, this person said that Critical Role earned $9.6 million in three years from Twitch, got another $11.3 million from Kickstarter for their, their animated series, and are definitely earning millions more on merch donations and streaming deals. Uh, I think it's more than time to stop treating them as an indie friend group and as a company. They definitely are. Uh, this isn't an anti-critical role post. And this actually isn't an anti-critical role video. Again, I want to be very clear. Uh, I'm just gobsmacked that they were the top Twitch streamers. Because I was kind of watching them on YouTube. I wasn't really paying attention to Twitch. I was watching them on YouTube. I'm like, they do okay. They get about twice what we get in views. And I'm like, that's okay-ish, but I also knew they had other brand deals and stuff, but holy shit, I didn't realize that they blew up on Twitch like that. Uh, the people behind it seem like lovely people, and I'm excited to see where it goes in the future, but as a company, they're making more than you or, you or I will likely see in a lifetime. Adjust your perceptions. Um, yeah, and I don't think it's really a debate. I mean, again, I am uh, a dive-in-the-wool capitalist for the most part. I mean, there are some, some things that I think that, you know, workers get screwed on big time. But for the most part, it's like if you have the means to make money and you make more money than somebody else because there's more of a market for it and you're not doing anything illegal, uh, I don't see any shame in doing that. Now, again, the only hang up I really have with critical role, and it's not even critical role, it's kind of the culture around critical role, uh, the Tumblr crowd, the, you know, the shippers, the fanfic writers, the people demanding changes to the game, because it has attracted a certain audience. But admittedly, I'm an old head, you know, so I'm, I'm always going to picture Dungeons and Dragons as being perpetually stuck in like 1989 in my mind. You know, it's just the way it's going to be. 
And this isn't even really about Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, it seems like Critical Role has, I mean, seriously, Critical Role could be like, yeah, we're coming up with our own RPG and we're not even going to use D&D anymore. And they probably would blow up. Like, yeah, it's just our own thing. We're, we're, it's a homebrew game. We're making our own game. We don't even need D&D anymore. <laughs> you know, we're like, we're just going to make our own game. And I could totally see them doing that if they haven't already started working on it yet. Um, we've got uh, this person here. I'm not sure why people insist on them being a small indie friend group when they've almost always been a company. It's kind of like Rooster Teeth. I guess parasocial relationships are to blame because a lot of the fan base believe they're genuine friends with the company. Uh, that's probably true. You see the same people on YouTube or Twitch for years, you know, and they're hanging out and they're uh, talking, having fun, whatever. You feel like you know them. And then it turns out that they've got this whole big production crew. I mean, group of friends don't have a theatrical premiere for the first episode of season three. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying like, what? And there's been this big push lately, uh, you know, in the press with, with Critical Role. Too. I don't know if they hired a PR firm or what the deal is, but like, you know, part of me is like, is this Hasbro? Is this because there are rumors and we did a, a video on this. There are rumors that Hasbro is looking to unload Dungeons and Dragons, uh, unload Wizards of the Coast. Um, you know, they, I'm sure they would get, you know, billion dollars plus for it, but they're looking to unload it. So this could all be about curb appeal. This could be like, look how popular D&D is when in fact it's not necessarily D and D it's critical role bringing more attention to D and D, but there, there was, there was a, a article in one of the Hollywood publications about the critical role factor and how, uh, you know, the Mercer effect and how, uh, the popularity of critical role has, has helped sell a shit ton of, of, uh, five E dungeons and dragons. And Hasbro has got to be looking at that. Like, yep, this isn't going to last forever. So let's, let's get the most money out of this thing as we can while we can, you know, uh, for sure. I, I could totally see that happening, but let's, let's go back to this. Uh, this person abstract Astro breaks it down, uh, breaks it down pretty well about that critical role Twitch money leak. Cause apparently a lot of people are talking about it. it. Seems like a lot. They're the top earners. Assuming the numbers are legit. Let's work out how much that actually is. There are 31 team members, 31, 31 people. We'll assume though it won't be the case. The true case are all paid the same. No, I can guarantee you. <laughs> I can guarantee you that is not the case. Uh, 9.6 million since 2019. We're in October 21, so that's about 3.39 uh, million a year. Critical Role LLC is incorporated in California, which means it'll pay 21% for corporate taxes. Yeah, this is why Clownfish Studios is not in California. Uh, we're left with about 3.01 million a year. Let's assume no expenses. Untrue. This means no deductions. All that money is paid out. About $97,000 and you apply income tax. I like this person. This person's all about the numbers. And result just under 70 k a year per team member just from Twitch. This is assuming they put none of that money back into the company, production, et cetera, et cetera, which is unlikely, very unlikely, very unlikely. So probably quite a bit less than 70000 Crunchy roll is, oh, crunchy roll. Critical roll, <laughs> critical roll is not just a group of friends playing D&D. That's entirely untrue. They're also not a lone streamer with lower running costs. That is true too. Again, it seems like a lot of money, but when you have to split it 31 ways and you're in California, it's not as much as you think. Uh, they're a small production company with 31 people plus studio rent production costs and much more in LA, one of the most expensive cities in the US. That is true. They also have other income sources, YouTube, merch events, sponsors, uh, they're not multi-millionaire gods, and they're not just some friends with a camera and a dream. They're a small production company, which is having success, good for them, and they should be seen accordingly with all the expectations that brings. Simple as that. Yes, and what is going to happen? There's going to be, if it hasn't happened already, because I haven't been following this very closely, but you're going to start getting complaints of critical role sold out. Critical role sold out because they're making money now. They were just doing it for fun, and now they're making money. Of course they are. You know, this is how it works. How dare they make money? But again, it's not their fault. It's the expectations of the fan base they've cultivated. Again, they brought a bunch of teenagers and young adults uh, from Tumblr. And some of these people are very money averse. I'm, I'm going to be honest. That's a polite way of putting it. So they're going to be like, hey, uh, you know, it's it's you shouldn't be making money because I play D&D &D and I don't get paid. You shouldn't get paid either. 
Uh, if critical role team members are paid the same and no money is used for production, that's 70,000 a year per person. Uh, likely much less because of cost, small company doing well, levels of money, not humble friends, not absurdly rich. Yeah, I would put them in the same, same bracket as like early rooster teeth, pre-corporate takeover. Um, and hopefully they don't go down that road. They did part ways with uh, Geek and Sundry. But I could totally see, you yeah, know, at some point in time, them being like, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll sell Critical Role. We'll sell it to Hasbro. And then Hasbro will just sell the whole damn thing to like Tencent or something, you know? Are people actually annoyed at this? Unfortunately, there's a vocal minority who think Critical Role making money is bad, a bad thing for some reason. These are the same people that think crowdfunding comics is bad, that getting paid to do anything you love is bad. And this is, you know, we run into this all the time. We see comic book people run into this all the time. I don't make money making comics. You should not make money making comics. You're a grifter. You're a grifter. You got paid. You got paid to make something that you wanted to make. You sold it to consumers. You're a grifter. So I'm, I'm waiting for that. Critical role or a bunch of grifters. That'll be the next thing. Uh, it's a bad thing to make money doing something you like doing. What difference does it make if they even make money out of it or not? Does it bother anyone? Yes, it bothers people greatly. Greatly, you wait, you wait, um, you wait. It it bothers people greatly. I can I can guarantee it. And they're they're gonna they're gonna there's gonna be some pushback. Um, we've seen it time and time again with comic book people. I don't think it's fair. Again, I think you should be allowed to be successful. And the only complaint I've had about Critical Role really is the culture. And that culture, just a theory, I th I think they'll turn on Critical Role because they hate money. They hate people being successful. You know, they hate uh, the business side of making things. And if, yeah, they had this delusion that it was just a bunch of friends hanging out and getting, you know, paid a little something just to hang out, uh, they're gonna have that that uh, bubble burst and they're gonna be salty. So very interesting to see this happen. Again, I'm just gobsmacked that of all the Twitch streamers, Critical Role is the top one. Gonna wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.